Writing a thesis can feel like scaling a never-ending mountain. References, reports, revisions, it's just so much to go through. But now you can use AI tools, but the problem is, there are so many AI tools to choose from, which ones do you use? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I would write a thesis using AI tools and stay around because I think after watching this video, you're never gonna write in the same way again. So the first thing to write a thesis is you need data. Now, there's no AI tool that's gonna help you create data. Not at the moment, watch out. Google Research Copilot is coming for you. But at the moment, you should have loads of results that you need to report and want to write about in your thesis. Now, here's the thing is that as you're going through your PhD and your research, you should be sort of like collecting these research stories. But where do you start? Now, I like to start by chapter. You have all these ideas about what you want to write about, but I like to sort of like organize it in chapters. So my thesis, this chunky boy, bonk, has approximately 12 to 15 sort of like figures per chapter. And so if your field has more or less, you know what you're aiming for. So that tells me I need to get together about 12 or 15 references to put together into a research story. And then that's where the AI magic comes in. Check this out. All right, I wanna use AI vision. And one of the best vision tools is ChatGPT. You can upload figures like this and you can just use a simple prompt like this. These are figures that are forming a chapter in my thesis. And these ones were originally in a peer review paper and then so suggest a story structure for the outline of this chat per no no andy it's a chapter all right then so you can see here it's given me the chapter it says there should be an introduction to that chapter obviously that's what you need but we're not going to sort of like touch on this just yet because there's going to be other ways to write that small introduction later in this video so stay around but this is kind of like what it's saying it should look like fabrication process which is great because we've got this schematic which shows how they are made and then going on it says electrical properties so this now gives us a structure to work with it tells us the logical kind of flow that chat gpt sees from your data. So upload a load of figures and see what story structure you can start with. After that, we have the story structure slotted in and then we need to actually create the words to support the figures. But starting with the figures means that you just know where you're heading and I like to work bit by bit, building out as we go and that's where we start. The next step, I actually come away from the computer and you'll see what I mean. All right then, so once we've got the story structure, we need to actually create content around the figures that sort of like create that chapter. So now I head over to my actual sort of like phone. And the reason I do this is because there is a button which allows me just to talk directly into ChatGPT. Now I like to use my voice, but you may differ. You may just sort of like writing. But for me, the way I like to do this, and I think you should try at least once, is by talking about the figure randomly. Just say stuff that comes off the top of your head and it will turn it into a really awesome paragraph. So for example here, I can click go and I can say, this is a figure that I want to write about in my thesis. It has four panels, A, B, C, and D. And in the first panel, A, we can see there's a silver nanowire network. And it tells me that it's a 34.7 plus or minus 10 ohms per square resistance. And uh, then in panel B, we have it with single ward carbon nanotubes. And you can see the sheet resistance drops to 15.2. Um, you can also see that the single ward carbon nanotubes wrap around the silver nanowires and they extend expand out into the gaps between the uh, silver nanowires uh, and then you go on like that and then we push go and then it says convert into text so this is what I ended up talking about you can see this is like the kind of really random stuff the thoughts that come off my head and you can talk for you know five ten minutes about a single figure it turn it into um, you know text and then the prompt is turn this into a paragraph for my thesis and then it says here figure x presents a four panel comparison of sil silver nanowire and modification with single ward carbon nanotubes and then it gives me something to work with. If you do that for every single figure that you've put into this chapter, then you have a little thing under each figure which then builds the story. That is so important because now we're going from like just the structure to the figures and now to the text and that's how we build out this thesis step by step. If you think that was cool, check out this next section where we really use the power of AI to its full potential. After you've got all of the story and you've built out the text around that story in the results and discussion section, now you need to go onto the introduction section. The introduction section is gonna be very, very important because it's gonna introduce all the concepts that you need to talk about in your thesis and it's gonna give the background the foundational knowledge. Now, as you're going through your research, you should have loads of references that you're working with. So if you 
you have loads of references to create the introduction section to your thesis, you can use one of these two tools. The first one I recommend you look at is Notebook LM. And so here you can see I've put in 20 something papers and this is what it's ended up with. So I say, I'm a PhD student writing my thesis. Write an introduction section to my thesis based on these sources. And you can see here that it's given me this kind of quite short um, structure. Now, Notebook LM isn't super good at producing loads and loads of text. So I did say it needs to be longer and it did make it a little bit longer and you can see it's all reference. But down here, this is where it really comes into its own. I said create an outline for an introduction section that could be expanded into 20,000 words. And that's approximately what my uh, introduction section is for my thesis. And you can see here it's done much better with the outline rather than the text um, you know, dump that it did before. So here we've got the different structures and this is now not only just the sort of like structure but it also includes the references to support the claims that it's saying that you should uh, you know mention in your introduction and you can see this is so much more detail than previously so this is how I like to work with notebook LM is given structures and then you can use exactly the same process of talking in to your uh, phone on chat GPT to sort of like flesh this out but there is a quicker way now this is the only AI tool that I found that does one prompt introductions to your thesis like a literature review or even the beginning of a peer review paper so if you have the references this is where I would go so head over to thesis AI and you can put in up to a hundred reference papers to be cited I've done this previously and you can see that it produced up to 17 pages now my introduction in my actual thesis is about 20 pages long so this isn't far off the entire introduction for a thesis so you can see that it's completely referenced and you can also take this it gives you a nice little abstract as well actually um, but also you can uh, put this directly into something like Overleaf and have complete control over the citations over how it's laid out so you're not locked into anything and the fact that it just spits out so much information about you know all of the stuff that you've given it in terms of references I don't think there's an AI tool that does it better at the moment but your mileage may vary so let me know in the comments if it works for your field but I've been very impressed with all of this and that's how I would write the introduction section section to my thesis um, if I had all of the references. This next section is bloody awesome. I use this technique all the time inside, outside of academia. Check it out. Now you naughty little thing, maybe you don't have all the references that you need to write your introduction. So I would start using deep research technology and the new sort of like features that it brings for writing an introduction section to your thesis. And I think the best one at the moment is Perplexity AI. So Perplexity AI allows you to put in a prompt and ask it for deep research for free. Oh, I love the for free bit. So here it says, research single ward carbon nanotubes and silver nanowire electrodes for the introduction section of a thesis. Write the introduction section to the thesis based on the research. And so here you can see we've got quite a significant amount of research and data in a uh, you know an appropriate format. Is it the best thing that you could just copy and paste across? No, obviously not. But it gives you such an awesome starting point if you don't have the references that you want to work with. So then I would take all of these references, I put them into my citation manager, and then I sort of like build out my introduction that way. So if you don't have references, deep research at the moment is your absolute friend when it comes to sort of like building out something like a literature review or the introduction to a thesis. Stay around to the end because I think after watching this entire video, your writing will never ever be the same again. So the next step is like, what about the other sections, like the conclusions, like the abstract? Well, I like to use kind of a stepwise approach for actually getting the content in there. So you have all of the conclusions from the different chapters of your thesis. So here we've got conclusions, we've got conclusions, we've got conclusions, and then we need to combine them. So I would put these into ChatGPT or your other AI model, and then I'd ask it to combine the conclusions from all of the chapters into a like mega conclusions. So that's just just a really simple way of making sure that you you know don't miss anything and then you can have it referenced back to certain um, chapters you can say like these are the conclusions from chapter one these are the conclusions from chapter two these are the conclusions from chapter three combine it into a conclusion section for the end of a thesis and then you can end up with a nice sort of like draft of that conclusion section of your thesis. That's how I would approach it anyway, or I would just sit and talk into my phone like the method you saw before. Easy peasy lemon squeezy.
Actually, interestingly, the method section of your thesis is where AI is probably the most useless because you know what you did in the lab and you should have sort of like a record of the things you've done, the techniques you've used, the instruments you used, the products that you bought. All of those things are just things you need to keep track of, but you can put that into an AI system like ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, whichever one you like, and just say, you know, here are the methods that I've used. Write a method section for my thesis. That's how I would do it. But really, that is the most manual part of a thesis using AI at the moment. Now, we have a load of text that we need to make sure actually meets academic standards. What do we use? Well, there are two tools that I would use. The first one, this is PaperPal in a nutshell. You can see here that I've got one of my papers here and along the side, it just gives you all of the things that you need to kind of like change and all of the suggestions that it recommends that you do to keep it up to academic standards. There we are. So we've got PaperPal apps for Microsoft Word, we got it for Google Docs, we've got it for Overleaf. So having this as you are writing alongside um, you know, your work is just gonna help you keep it up to academic standards. But there is a better way to actually check all of your stuff using AI tools and the best tool at the moment, no doubt in my mind, is Thesify. Thesify isn't free, but it can actually do a lot of the heavy lifting that your reluctant supervisor doesn't want to do. So here you can perfect your academic writing with confidence. And this is something I've done before. I've put in my peer reviewed paper and you can see here you get loads of feedback. You get feedback, you get a digest, you get resources, collections, all of these things. But ultimately this is what we want on the side. Feedback summary is what works well, what can be improved in the overall assessment. And then it's got recommendations. If we collapse that and look into suggested topics or purpose, so let's go into purpose. Uh, you know, these things I've done well, but there's some things that I can improve. So this is looking at your peer reviewed paper or your thesis or your writing, you know, put an entire chapter in here and it will tell you where you're not meeting academic standards. It is like a supervisor who is actually willing to help you and is ready there and waiting for you to give it its paper. It's not like, oh yeah, it's still on my desk, I'm afraid, or I'm off on sabbatical to France for a bit, whatever, we know you're just going on holiday. Anyway, this is like a great place to put that first draft before you even send it to your supervisor and it will give you all of the different things that you should change to make sure that you're actually sort of like meeting the highest of academic standards. That's how I would use AI to write a thesis and it's like mashing together a load of techniques to work powerfully for you. Let me know in the comments which one you like and if you like this video go check out this one where I talk about how to write an abstract using ChatGPT. I think you'll love it.